Like hearing about bounty hunting, we often get scopes that include all subdomains of a company. Many people instantly think of brute forcing subdomains. While we could guess for them, this would not only be time consuming, but there's also a large chance that we will miss some. Subfinder is a subdomain discovery tool made by Project Discovery that does not have these issues. Unlike most subdomain discovery tools, Subfinder uses third party sources such as Shodan and other open source sources to get its subdomain data. This means that we are never reaching out to the domain that we want to get subdomains from. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use Subfinder. We will show you basic flags and how to configure its config files. Subfinder is not installed by default in Kali Linux, so we have to install it. We can do this by either going to the Git repository and building it, or we can use the app repository to install it. Since the tool is still actively updated, we recommend using the Git repository because the version that can be installed with the app repository is lagging behind the Git release. Before we can install the Git version, we need to install Golang first. We can do this using apt. After we installed Golang, we can install Subfinder using the following command. When we've installed Subfinder, we can find the binary in our home slash go slash bin folder. When we run the command with the H flag, we can see there are not many commands available. Before we can run Subfinder, there is however one small thing. First, we have to set up the application by adding sources that Subfinder can use. We do this by editing its config files and adding API keys there. The config file is located in the config slash Subfinder folder. While Subfinder has open source databases that it's able to use without API keys, the following sources need an API key. Buffer over, binary edge, C99, census, search spotter, chaos, chinas, DNSDB, GitHub, Intelx, passive total, robtex, security trails, shodan, threadbook, URL scan, virus total, zoomai, zoomai API, fofa and fullhunt. The sources that require API keys are often limited in the amount of free queries that we can make or require a subscription to access. But they tend to be better curated sources for bug bounty hunters than their free sources. When we are putting in the API keys of the platforms that we have keys for, we notice some platforms use an API keys that use two values. These can be entered by using a colon as a separator. Once we've entered the API keys that we want to enter, we can run Subfinder on our domain and scope. Like we said before, Subfinder does not make queries to a DNS server, but to an API which we query for information. The simplest way to start a query for subdomains is to use a D flag followed by a domain. This will start Subfinder using the select domain. When we run it like this, we run the APIs that are configured in the config file. If we want to query a number of domains, we can create a text file containing domains separated by new lines. We can then load it using the DL flag. This will run all the domain entries in the file we created. To see exactly what is being done by Subfinder, we can use the V flag. This enables the verbose mode and will show us which APIs are queried. This can be used to see if there are any issues with the APIs that are configured. We can select specific sources we have defined in a config file using the S flag followed by a comma separated list of sources. We can find the sources using the LS flag. Items in the list marked with an asterisk are sources that require an API key and an account with the servers. We can also do the inverse by excluding specific sources with the ES flag, followed by a comma separated list of sources. This will exclude the specific sources from being used. If we want to use all the configured APIs, we can use the all flag. When using this flag, discovery of hosts will take a long time since all the APIs are queried. It's important to be aware of this if you are running this application on a cron job, since it could cause some finder to be started multiple times before it completed once. If we are running multiple queries in succession, it might be a good idea to limit the speed that Subfinder requests from sources. To do this, we can use the limiting features that Subfinder contains. These allow us to either limit the rate of requests with the RL flag followed by amount of HTTP requests per second, or we can also limit the concurrency with the T flag followed by a number. By default, there's a concurrency of 10. The concurrency is only used when we are using active resolving to check the host names that are online. To save the output, we got several options. We can write the output directly to a file using the O flag followed by a string. We could output to a JSON format using the OJ flag. We can also output to a directory using the OD flag. 
Be aware that outputting to a directory is only possible if you are requesting information from multiple different domains at the same time by using an input file. Find the hosts that are active, we can use the active flag. This flag makes Subfinder check if the host is active or not. It does this by sending a ping to the subdomain. The final flag we'll explain is a silent flag. This flag removes all the extra items from the output. This allows us to pipe the results of Subfinder directly to another tool for further processing. This feature makes Subfinder a great part of your toolchain. As you have seen in this video, Subfinder is a great tool for gathering subdomains during the reconnaissance phase of bug bounty hunting. Hopefully it should give more bounties to collect. If you learned anything from this video or liked the content, help us grow by giving a like, comment or subscribe. It would help us out a lot. Thank you for watching.